I greet you in the name of Jesus our Lord and our Savior. Welcome my brother to the hour of value. This is a wonderful time. Welcome to the month of May. This month is dedicated for reasonable service. Reasonable service. What is reasonable service? What is reasonable service? is the true meaning of worship. When we worship, we render to God a reasonable service. Does God need your service? Yes. Which kind of service? To worship Him. Let me pray with you, then we speak the word of God. Dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, I come before you. I bring my brother into your hand. Continue to bless him. Continue to bless her, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit come. Your Holy Spirit touch. Your Holy Spirit change everything. I pray that you may continue to strengthen them, to bless them, and to protect them today and forever. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Beloved, I thank God for you, for this time. In this day, the 1st of May 2021, I want to connect your spirit, your heart, with the heart of God. By doing that, you will render a reasonable service, a good service to God and to man. This week, or this weekend, our topic is good attitude. Good attitude, the only true way of worship. Or one among the virtues, the values, that helps us to worship God in the way that pleases Him. Let us read in Romans 12, 1, 2. 12, 1, 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. This is a true and a proper worship. In other words, this is a reasonable service. Verse 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. He is good, pleasing, and perfect will. Amen? The Apostle Paul is speaking two things here. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and verse 2, the verse 1 is dedicated to our body. How God wants our body to be. Paul is trying to explain us how we can be good worshippers, how we can render a reasonable uh, service to God, how we can please God by our body, through our body, our intellect, uh, sorry, our body, which means our strength, our physical appearance, how 
we can dedicate our flesh to God so we may become true worshipers. The second verse, this verse is dedicated to our soul. He's tackling our mind, our intelligence, intellectual pardon. God wants us to use our ability, our mental capacity to worship Him. How we can exercise our faith through our logic, through our mind. How we can use our faith through our intellectual capacity. How we can change our mindset to become a sanctuary of worship. How we can be a, a, a good worshipers. How we can render a reasonable worship, a true and a proper worship to God. So, as a apostle of the Gentiles, he was speaking to people who were used to dedicate their body to immoral sexual to idolatry, to killings, to jealousy, to different kind of sins. When he preached them the gospel of God, he told them to renounce those old habits. He told them to renounce the sins, the, 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 the evil condition, the way of a pagan lived. But sometimes it was very difficult for them to, to surrender the old habits, to surrender their sins. Then he showed them, he spoke to them the way to overcome the flesh and render a reasonable service to God. He said this, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. You see, when at the ancient time they came with an offering to God or sacrifice to God, this sacrifice was alive. This sacrifice had life in it. The blood, the, the, the instinct, actually this being a goat or bull or ox or cattle, every kind of animal who were uh, dedicated to be, uh, uh, to be sacrificed should be uh, alive. So, when Paul speaks about to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, he, 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 he wants to, the, 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 the way, the, the proper word here is that you must use your intellect, your mind, use your being, not a dead person, use your reason to go to God, to offer yourself to God. Not by force, not by intimidation, not by um, other people's um, point of view, but by yourself. You dedicate yourself to God without any external uh, forces or any external conviction. But from within yourself, you, you agree to dedicate, to be dedicated to God. That was Paul was telling these people that I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Praise the Lord. Your bodies as a living sacrifice. You see, uh, this is not just uh, a periphrasis 
for yourselves but in the strict sense he said you are bodies it's not a metaphor no you yourself you are body it's not allegory is not a metaphor this is you you yourself to give you a body as a sacrifice go to the altar go to the altar to be sacrificed this body is the very part of you which is apt to be an occasion of falling you understand your body is the very part of you which is apt to be an occasion of falling maybe your eyes you want to look at girls you want to look at boys you want to look something that's not used maybe hearing you hear the word that is not glorifying the name of God you are mouth you speak some evil words this very part of you which is apt to become an occasion of falling God wants you to sacrifice that body yeah to sacrifice that body what does it mean to renounce to say from now I dedicate my mouth. I dedicate my eyes. I dedicate my ears. I dedicate my body. That push me. That pushes me to the sins. When you do that, really, you make a huge, a huge sacrifice. I urge you today to offer that part of body that is apt to be an occasion of falling. So, when Paul speak about the bodies of men, he see the sacrifice as a solution to this problem. And this body must be also holy and acceptable to God. Holy and acceptable or pleasing to God. You see, when the Jewish people made sacrifice, so the qualification was that these sacrifices were to be unblemished without any spot. You see, in like manner, the Christian sacrifice must be holy and pure in God's sight. Otherwise, it cannot be acceptable to Him. You should go before God just purifying your heart purifying your thoughts your, your your mind don't just go before god as you want go there and kneeling down asking for forgiveness and becoming holy before god by the, the, the by the, the power of the holy ghost who helps us to become holy so i i urge you my brother to become holy when you are holy, you please your God. When you are holy, you are acceptable before God. The qualification of the sacrifice was to be unble unblemished or without the spot sacrifice. So the same way, we need to have the connection of our God through holiness sanctification 
Let us allow the blood of Jesus to sanctify us. The Holy Spirit, the word of Holy Spirit, to make us holy. Let us become before the throne of God with humility. The, let our attitude be humble before the Lord. Don't boast. Remove your pride. Remove your pride before God. Just be holy. God will accept you. This is reasonable service. Reasonable service. Reasonable service. The word of God. tells us to cleanse our hands, to cleanse our feet, to wash even our mouth and all our other members so all this may yield a fruitful unto God. We may become fruitful before God. We may use our mouth to glorify our hands for good actions, our feet for good project, our, our mind to glorify God and to bless Him. Praise the Lord. We must dedicate our bodies to God. Amen. We must dedicate our bodies to God. The worshiper must offer, must present before God himself with all his living energies and powers directed consciously to God's service. My brother, my sister, Paul is telling you the second part to do. When you sacrifice, you give your body. Remember not your mind. The good attitude before God is this. To refuse, to condemn, to flee away the pardon of this world. The Bible says, do not conform to the pattern of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renew your mind, my brother. Renew your mind, my sister. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. This is reasonable service. Your good attitude, my brother, my sister. In Philippians 489, the Bible say, finally, brethren, finally, my brother, my sister, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, Wherever things are pure, wherever things are lovely, wherever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Your good attitude is to meditate for the things that are true, for the things that are noble for the things that are just, for the things that are pure, for the things that are lovely, for the things that are good, of good report, for the things that are kind, gentle. Let good words come through your mouth. Good thoughts, purified thoughts, come out of your heart. By doing this, you will become 
a good worshiper. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord help you. May this, may this month of May, you decide, you make a choice to render a good service to God. To serve God with humility, to serve God with a pure heart, to serve God with a love. Let us pray. Heaven Father, I come before you with my brother, with my sister. I pray that your glory, your power be with him. Touch him. Touch her, Lord. Transform her mind, his mind, for your glory. Allow them, Lord, to become a sanctuary of worship, altar of worship. They may render a proper, reasonable service to you, a true and a pleasing worship. I pray for them in the name of Jesus. Amen. My brother, my sister, I invite you to follow uh, right now. I have a conference here in Dayton, sorry, in Ohio, Columbus. Join me in this conference. After this, I will continue with you. God bless you and God be with you. I love you all. Bye.